Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting number 61. As always, these meetings are being recorded for those people that aren't right here with us at the end of March, March 31st. Tomorrow's April Fool's Day. I am so glad we're not having this meeting tomorrow because I really don't know what would happen. Could Anybody else? <sighs> I'm not big on April Fool's Day. It's one of those days I just stop reading everything online. It's entirely too cheap to go make really bad jokes. Um, we'll do triage. Then we'll do questions and comments for anything that comes up um, after that. And we probably will, while we're doing triage, go through Wix 310 bugs, because if I remember correctly, Bob asked for that, and we should probably make Bob happy a little bit. Thank you. So triage Just a little bit to the web, and we'll do the bugs, and then we'll do the 310 stuff from there. That works. Cool. So, starting at the bottom, I was just trying to repro this bug. I just don't believe it, but it's possible it's true, but I don't know why that you can't create a managed bootstrapper unless it is signed, which just doesn't seem right to me. Strong name signed, I'm assuming? Yeah. Got me. Yeah, so Sean, you make test BAs all the time and don't have to sign them. So yeah, I don't think this is true. I think something else is wrong. But I don't know why signing would have solved it. So, Sean, can we re close this no repo based off of your statement, and we'll go from there? Because I was just starting before this meeting, then I realized I ran out of time. Sure. All right, cool. If it comes back, we'll give it to Sean. It's all his fault. No. Anyway. Compiler error output misleading. Using votive, I changed hyperlink that. Standard list is uh, license is unknown. Please ensure the variable is declared. Then I started going on the road. This, but I'm guessing this error is generic catch for a missing variable. Be helpful if well known variables had more appropriate resolution message to assist setup developers. So, do we want to put catches in the Wix toolset for things that can now be done another way in extensions? Well, I mean, we'd have this would have to be something, that, you know, a new kind of interface for an extension to support, right? Or we could happen. just hard code them in the Wix no. toolset. No, no, then, we can't do that. Okay, then we're not putting the, then we're not putting this in the interface. No, I mean three. <laughs> well, certainly not Wix three. Um, I mean, we could we could add an interface that that let. An extension. Oh God, but this is a link time. Bind time. Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. Well, even better. Um, yeah. So we have to do it at bind time to basically say, you know, here's an error. Do you have a better one? If so, please provide it. Otherwise, we'll give you the generic one. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, that's almost interesting. Um, I don't want to get into hard coding. I mean, I just, it's bad enough we have magic variables. I don't want to add additional magic just to, just to, you know, improve the error message in those cases. Um, Sean, I, I noticed in the net effects and ball pull request you sent, that basically gets rid of magic variables for Wix standard BA, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. That That's the... Um, this is standard BA, though. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I know. I know. I'm just... Okay. We're reducing the number of magic variables, which makes me happy. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm... You know, I'm plus zero on on making a new interface. I'm minus zero on hard coding. Maybe minus point five. Remind if I round that up, does it go to negative one or does it go to zero? I always forget. Oh, uh, bankers rounding. It's confusing. Yes. Um. <laughs> um. I don't care. There aren't many of these. We don't do this very often. 
we shouldn't have done it at all in the first place, we would have avoided this problem. So, right. I mean, not to say I told you so. Well, yeah. But you know, no, I. I, that, I guess that's part of it. It's like you know, the, the the error message isn't wrong. Is the other thing? Yes, obviously the the authoring the extension authoring is you know much more usable, et cetera, et cetera. But the error message isn't wrong. You could still use the magic variable because it's a magic variable. I, I'd be I'd be a lot more concerned if the if the error message was wrong. The fact that it's suboptimal is not great, but that's pretty much inherent in the suboptimal case. For a specific magic variable, yeah. But I mean <laughs> why? Like how much like we're gonna create a whole extension interface for something we don't do anymore and we won't do again because we will remember this? Like at that point um, we might just why don't we just hard code it in the compiler linker? Go, yeah. Here was a mistake. We fixed it. <laughs> yeah. Although, if, if we get rid of the magic variables in four entirely, then this goes away completely. Then, then this goes away because I don't think between MBA and standard BA, I don't think we have any others. I think that covers it. Right. So, do we put the hard coded thing in the compiler for this thing that we're not going to add any more for? In 3x, 3.10, 3.11, one of those two. Yes or no? Um, uh, ah, pressure. Um, well, first of all, Jacob makes a good point. This should, in part, be a doc bug. Um, like right now, if you search for that particular magic variable, you don't find anything useful in the chum. Oh, okay. No. So yeah. So doc bug at least then. At least a doc bug. Um, Do we want to put an error message in the binder that says this thing? If you hit this, then here's a message we spit out special for it. Have a nice day. 3.10. In 4.0, this isn't a problem. Honestly, in yeah. 3.10, maybe we should, because in 4.0, it's changed. It's a uh, deprecated warning message. All right, I'm plus zero now. Changed my sign. I mean, it's, yeah. Not grand, it's a thing that, you know, it's like, yep. We did this, bad us. Since we're popular, people use our stuff and do anything. So Jacob votes for the doc bug and nothing else. I'm really ambivalent. I don't, I don't care. All right, John's second. Sean, you got to preference on that place? We could leave it open in, for 3.11. No. <laughs> we're not going to fix it. If we're not going to fix it now, we're not going to fix it then. Mm. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, so Sean's with me, whatever. All right, I think we got a bunch of votes for doc bug, so we'll turn it to a doc bug and we should get it so that search does return a good thing. All right. That makes sense. Because if there's nothing the that's not great, then yeah, good. 310. Parse type lib minor version maximum value check. Ugh. We've, this is a minor. I know we had problems with major. Let's check the range. How Microsoft minor version could be a 16 bit value, which is the same as major version. Minor value expects a short unsigned integer between that and that. Oh, OK. What is it? Is it currently a byte? Is it currently 255? Well, the doc that he's pointing to says both can be 16-bit. Are we restricting this to uh, product version type versioning? No, we, we've done special. I know there's special things for type libs. And, I, and I, it's been wrong once before, I think. I wonder if the doc is changing on us. <laughs> you know? Like they found out, oh, actually, no, it used to be 25, but actually, we're wrong. It can't be 65, 535. So I'm like, okay. Com? What? The com changing out from under us? No, the doc. I don't think com is changing. It oh, used to be well. byte, byte, int, int, right? Yeah. Yeah. We're, yeah, we're letting major version be U short 
and minor version via byte. Right. So, so they're probably right. Yeah, see, right there, very clear. Assuming this is the right version. This is from middle. Object, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, it's a bug, I, I'd say they're right. So yeah, we should fix that. It's an easy fix, we took it in 310. And 40, we need to fix it. It's expanding at least, it's not shrinking it, so at least that's a good sign. All right, I'm cool with that. I'll take it, and it's a trivial fix. Yeah. Cannot specify component directory when nested under a component group with directory specified. That's correct. You cannot. Oh, component wait. group directory is limited to a single directory? Today, you can argue whether this is a good thing or not. Today, yes. if your component group specifies a directory, you none of your components can have a directory. Component directory cannot... Be, cannot be specified when the component element is nested underneath a directory element. Oh, okay. Even though neither a component or a component group is nested under it, found the issue fine. So the error message is bad too. So there you go. Wait, why is it? I'm confused. Why is it? The error message says you cannot specify a component directory when you specify the component element underneath a directory element. Oh, sorry. I I read the That's title the, as being the error message. It's not. Right. That's what it should say. Or that error message should be expanded a little bit. It's not in a directory element or nested under an element, a component group with a directory specified on it. Okay. Um, so it it's... I can see the restriction, but I can also see component group directory specifying, like, you know, a default and components being able to override that for like child directories. Right. The problem is that today the component doesn't know if it's underneath a component group or a directory. It just looks at it's the thing that got passed to it. Right, right, right. So uh, which way do we want to fix it? Do we want to fix the error message or do you want to expand it so it's allowed? Expanding that it's allowed is a bigger change, of course. I still don't think we should allow you to do component directory when you're nested underneath a directory element. That's really silly. I agree with that. That's yeah. really confusing. <laughs> um, you know, you're really trying to limit these to half an hour, aren't you? <sighs> By making me think fast and everything. I have a deadline Friday. I can just feel it. <laughs> This is why hey, there are a bunch of pull requests that I've looked at and went, oh, crap, I'm not getting to that today. Right. <laughs> next week. Life is better next week. Anyway. Um, so I'm, I'm okay with expanding it. it I, I'm okay with expanding it because I think there's a good use case for that. I've, I've actually um, hit it before. <laughs> That's why I yeah. didn't want to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was it's, like, it's, why don't we let you do this? This actually isn't yeah, horrible. Yeah. But yes. You know, it makes sense. Component group is a default directory, you know, and then I'm I'm thinking of like loc especially you know you have a bunch of binaries in a directory but yeah. maybe your locs in a numbered else directory. Um, that said, I don't know that I want to take that fix in or that change in 3.10. Totally would take it in four, especially with inline directory syntax. Although yeah, it's a little bit weird as to if you have a relative directory. I don't even know what it does right now. I think you still get the error message. It doesn't build, um, I don't think. So, yeah, I guess I, I'd be open to taking this in 3.10 um, if the change is small enough. Um, but I keep assigning myself these kinds of bugs to go investigate, and that's why I keep having many bugs on my plate. Uh, so I don't know that I want to take this one. Under those circumstances, um, anyone out there wanting to want to volunteer to look at this and see what the change is. If not, I'd say we can, you know, we can open it, open it in four. Don't everybody rush to type. Okay, I'm thinking that's a no. I'm going to vote that we still take an error message improvement, though, in 3X. 
that's I mean that's can you take that because you're going to be in there in the messages anyway can you just you know add a little bit on the end of it call it good I'm going to be in the error messages anyway aren't you that wasn't the, didn't we just take a bug that's going to be a matter of updating messages.xml maybe I remember that wrong well that's like saying you're going to be in compiler.cs anyway so <laughs> well messages are just strings hey let's give it to John he said he'll do it oh oh okay Done. Um, yeah, good. I don't know if we need an agreement for something small, but we might. be easier if you had an agreement. All right. Use interfaces for bootstrap classes. we got to have a... Duplicate. There's another bug for this. Oh. Duplicate 3815. Sean found it. Sean found it. All right. Yeah, there's there's a lot of little things about the bootstrapper class that I'm not really thrilled with, but yeah. Anyway, it's actually surprisingly functional given the, the no, rush we had with some of the MBA stuff. No, it's it's all right. It's just there's a few little things I don't, like it's missing a try get which I want to go add in four. Might even add in three one of these days. Mm, okay. I really want to try get on the variables, for example, and stuff like that. So there's just a lot of little things that are just going to... Mm. So anyway. Well, I agree with Heath there. What? MBA is that we can add new functionality in MBA and please just work. I'm going to be in there pretty soon. Well, Sh Sean, I don't know what you're doing, but we should talk about whatever you want to do in there. So it's like... <laughs> Anyway. Well, the, the native the native BAs are are a pain, but we mostly because of binary compatibility. But if you use the you know base bootstrapper app class, yeah, we can cover up a lot of the yeah, the sins. Well, that's another thing. You know, we we should get away from that interface thing too. But you know, again, well, so Sean, if you, if that. you're doing the interfaces, we should see like a whip or something so we can talk about what the interfaces look like for it. V table order still needs to be maintained. Sean, you you have uh, oh I can actually just go look and see that you've assigned thirty eight fifteen to yourself, right? Yes. Yeah, and brought it back to full. I knew that came recently. Okay. Cool. All right. Web documentation of component directory. For just be pulling the methods that already exist in the interface. Well, no, because all the methods are there. Um, Overwritable. They're not abstract. So if you pull everything to an interface, suddenly you have to implement everything in your thing. Anyway, the, pulling the BA, the Bootstrap app into an interface is not straight up is not the simple thing. So anyway, that's why I was like, there's ways of doing this. We should make sure we pick the right one. Oh, the only the engine that needs the interface. Oh, I see. I thought they want to make it the Bootstrap app. I guess that's unit testable for somebody else, isn't it? Um, yeah, we could. Yeah, all the engine side things like the actual engine, right? Instance, variables, all right, that right. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, all right. Web documentation of component directory file ID is wrong. Identifiers may contain ASCII characters. Dish every da da da. da. Note that is. Pro it's not well. It's not wrong because yeah. it is actually a string. Um, what do they want to say instead? Ah, what did I just hit? <laughs> the bullet. The bullet? Yeah. Really? Wow. It turned into a dash dash XN yeah, file yeah. ID type string instead of identifier, I guess. We don't have an identifier type. We don't have, that's the problem, right? Okay. We don't have an identifier type because... I think for the most part because we have, you know, how many, we can have preprocessor variables, we can have, you know, bind time variables and all the other stuff. On an, on an ID type page, the same way that disk type ID has its own, ID type has its own page. Uh, fine. <laughs> I don't care. 
Well, I mean, could we? I mean, could we really come up? Because, again, it's not just that identifiers are special. It's we don't we don't put a lot of restrictions on in the schema. We don't we sorry we don't use the schema to enforce a lot of these things. That's true. And we use enums a lot, but otherwise a lot of stuff is just wide open, and the actual checks are performed in the compiler. Well, we could create a type that is a string that has a comment on it that says what the things are. Oh. Yeah, I suppose we could. And add no additional restrictions. Right, right, okay. Okay, well, that's uh, reasonable, I guess. Yeah, I, probably going to have hit some issue with the, um, what do you call it, the uh, uh, code DOM generator, but <laughs> wouldn't surprise me, but, you know, whatever. Mm, okay. Right, because it would try to create a type of ID type that would I, be a string. I don't know what it would be. <laughs> I don't know what it would do. But anyway, it could be done. I don't really care. So, yeah, I can live in 3X. Seems reasonable. Okay. Right? Yeah. Yeah. If someone wants to go do the work, I can see that. Cannot but install it's a feature, or, not a bug. It is a feature. Cannot install or uninstall Wix toolset 4.02719. Um, Does no one look at the preview? I always look at the preview. Is that just me? It's not just you. Okay. But many of the other people don't. So, anyway. Uh, you can refresh it if you want. Oh, thank you. Okay. Fail to write run key. Ooh. There we go. Well, fascinating. Access denied. Yeah. Oh, at the top it failed to load the state file too? Oh, this is the uninstall. Well, that's because it could not find it. They've whacked their machine in funky ways. Or it didn't, it failed to install up front. Right, all right. He said it failed to install, right? No, that one, he or she. Yeah, installation failed. However, it's still there. Now the waste still set cannot be uninstalled. Access is denied. Right? That's 005, yeah. Uh, oh crap, uh, whatever. Yeah, access denied. Good. So, access denied. Um, well, that's the problem. They they should probably restart their machine. Something has gone awry here. It, some, like something has locked this key on them, which may be another process still running or something like that. Like the old install failed. It might be nice to know where the installation failed too. Um, yeah. So how about we push this to Wix users and not try to fix as a bug? Have, let's go support them there, and then if we, when we get a bug, we'll do that. Yeah, I agree. Sean's. Yeah, I think an installation log is probably more useful. We have to figure out what went wrong so we can figure out. Oh, yeah, the key is locked by this thing or. Whatever. So, how about we close this? Tell them to go get help on Wix users, and then we'll open a bug against the root issue, and we'll fix it in a future build. Okay. Good. Three ten. Open. Okay, good. So, um, I haven't had a chance to look at this, but when I, I did take a quick gander, and it is possible this was fixed in one of those things, like Heath said. So, this may be done, which would be nice. That's mine in 310. Bob, you're in the next one. Am I? Four, five, yeah. two, four, six, two, less. Those yep. which, uh, now what? <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, this is the this is fun. I've spent some time on this. Um, the 
the problem with the EULAs in your screen is not black. Oh, no, it's back. Um, so for .NET 4.5, um, we just we had a link, and it went to a Microsoft website that would download the correct EULA based on the language that came from the browser request. So it was kind of nice. We only had one URL, but we got uh, localization for free. Um, starting in four, that was for .NET 4.5, 4.5.1, 4.5.2, and now 4.6. There is no such link, and I apparently lack the charm that Eric brought to the problem uh, because no one's expressed interest in doing it. Um, which brings us back to how are we going to do this um, if we can't have uh, the Microsoft site both providing the payload and providing the localization. Um, so what I have right now solves half of that by placing the English EULAs in the bundle. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know how I feel about providing only English EULAs. Mm -hmm. So then we get into okay. So how do we how do we do languages localized EULAs? And here we run into another problem, which is the link that that we use in the MBA prereq BA theme. Links can't links don't localize. Files localize. So if we did the uh, mm. the blah, yeah the the theme with the RTF license right in the window, yeah. we would get localization for free, which also handles um, the problem that comes up next, which is that there are of course many more languages than EULAs. Um, so we we basically we need full loc fallback support if we want to try to do localized EULAs. And that, you know, because that would handle falling back to English. Now we're running into the problem that the .NET team is not always as as crisp when they put together the EULAs, for example, a lot of the EULAs are, you know, the big ugly hundred 20k monstrosities that you get from Word rather than the simpler ones that you get from WordPad and sometimes necessary based on the whole rich edit control, blah, blah, blah. Um, so we start talking about, you know, a dozen EULAs across a couple of versions of .NET. We're now adding a bunch of bytes to the Wix installer and to um, everybody's bundle, that is, man. And everybody's bundle, exactly. And it, well, and not only if they're managed, even if they just want. The what if we document. host the EULAs and hand out the right one for their language? Dude, I want to share my screen right now because I have a little document, and um, that was my suggestion number six, uh, which is that we could, you know, replicate the FW link that Microsoft did, and possibly host the licenses and get the the language request handling that uh, FW links get. I vote for that. <laughs> well, all right. Done. Because all these other things are not good. Yeah. No, I, that's, I got, like I said, I got to the ENU point, and then I realized the loop was going to be a, you know, was going to require some, at the very least, some code change in addition to other practical problems of having to carry around a couple megs worth of EULAs. Um, I decided we needed to do something else. Hosting them ourselves was my pref you know, my, my preference. Okay, let's let's talk about that. Uh, I'll have some ideas. Let's talk about that. So let's not okay. solve that now. Let's just talk about that. All right, uh, burn support for only caching packages. Heath, there is a little bit left on this to do. Sean did part. Sean, that's in three ten, right? Yeah, that that already got down, right? So all we need is the last part to be done on top of Sean's change for that to get done. All right, cool, awesome. So that's underway. And you said you already have a pull request starting for 2014 support VS extension. I saw that go by, so that's cool. 
Jacob, temp file update isn't deleted when download fails. Forgot. I will take a look this weekend. I have a fix for four four eight two. In my in four, good. So I need to do your pull request. Yes, I I totally yeah. You're like again. I got crunched this week, so I just was there at the beginning of last week, and the end of last week was not good. And this week I have to catch up for last week. All right. So both of these Jacob things are good. Include Wix UI dialogs in installer and zip. Why? Don't have to download the source code. Okay. So they can tweak them. Okay, cool. Let's give this to Sean. I assume you're still going to do it? That's right. He left it ambiguous. Okay. All right, cool. Include built in themes in installer and zip. That's Bob. It is? It says your name on it right now. I swear I didn't just do it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Sean, you, did you want both of those? Yeah, good. Did I not do it? Oh, man, I'm slacking at my yeah, no kidding. scribe job. Um, object reference not set to an object. Yeah, I know you're going to take a peek at this one because it's such a horrible error message and all that. <sighs> well, it's not really an error message. It's a crash. Sorry, crash. Yeah, that, that the end result error message is, is really bad. Yes. Yeah. Um, I will still take okay. a look. Um, I mean, there's still time in 3.10. No need to throw it out yet. Right. Several pre-initialized burden built-in variables not this. I think I see a f something moving around about this, right, Sean? In four, there's a pull request, and we need to get it through or something like that, right? I think that's one Sean sent for three as well. Oh, three and four? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Set property docs don't include sequence first. Yeah, that, I remember that coming in. Yep. With standard hyperlink. Yeah, I remember that coming in. Right. Uh, yes. <sighs> yeah, I still have. This is my large chunk of. Um, Bob will look at it. Bugs. Yes. That's um, fine. Yeah. Three ten is on your schedule at this too. point, and we don't have anybody screaming for it. So, you know, well, whenever um, I mean, VS twenty fifteen is going to be the driving force for this. So. Yes. But I also it is on my schedule, and I want it to be done. Yep. There's no reason we can't be done. Yep. Uh, yep. Yeah. There. I mean, they announced the you know, VS 2015 SKUs today, so you know we know they're getting close. Yes. Um, he 40, 47, 47, 19 is us. So 46:30. Oh, 46, um, 30. 46. Yeah. 30. Yeah. So this was a. No, I don't want to. I don't want to cover them right now. We need to talk about the pull request. You know, we'll do that. Okay, that's fair. All right. Um, well, be, well, we yes, get most of the rest. Um, I know this is being worked on. Um, allow work on allow um, tweaking in NetFX packages conditions. That would be nice. Yeah. XE package repair doc. That would be nice. Compiler output yep. missing. That's a doc thing. I'll do now, that. This is a small change, and then Jacob said he'd just take that. So cool. So we need to have Bob go away for you know John. For about sorry, John. What did I say, Jacob? My bad. Yeah, the J's. John, Jacob, Sean, Hall. I need a Smith. Um, because that almost works, right? Because <laughs> I, I figure out how to turn Jinglehammer into Sean Hall. I just haven't figured out how to hit Smith at the end of that thing. And eventually, I'm going to put this all together. And it's going to. I think you do it by plastic. ignoring all the rules of. <laughs> Never mind. Yes. My son will be thinking it's just so hilarious when I finally get that right. Although he'll probably tell me, no, Daddy, you're saying it wrong. Because um, he's particularly like that. Um, I don't, this doesn't look, this doesn't look, doesn't look horrible. I mean, it's like, Bob, we need to no. give you like a day without having people bug you with other work. <laughs> what it looks like. I don't know. My, my boss, man. Um, yeah. No, this is, these are all simple. I, I don't like the numbers going up, um, but I keep taking the bugs, so it's apparently my own fault. Um, but they are simple, and we can, you know, I can knock these out in a weekend. Yeah, it's the, I think you just need eight hours of just working on Wix, you know, like a day. Yeah. This is what I'm doing. Build, done, build, done, build, done. done. Yep. Hey, look, I'm done. 
because none of these are hard that you have, I don't think. Well, no. actually, this one's hard. <laughs> this, if this is yeah. the last one standing, there there would be worse things. The, it will it will be the last one standing. Well, um, well, this one. Let, let's talk about how we do this. I have some ideas, and we'll we'll okay. talk about that. Cool, cool. All right, cool. On that note, I think we're done here. Questions, comments, things like that. Uh, Jacob, with regards to the prereq package changes in 4.0, would anyone object if we were to blindly add the payload for NetFX 4.0 web for the testing bundles? Right, the, yeah, but I thought Sean just sent a fix for this problem, right, where we have to have NetFX 4. So we shouldn't need this, right? Like, I mean, we're broken now, we're going to be fixed soon, it'll all be good. Sean's typing. Anything else other people have? Um, uh, Sean's question on, on uh, Sean's question on 4630. In the burn engine directory, there's a bunch of exported functions, right? They're not part of the interface that you get, you know, as a BA or or anything like that. Um, we've changed those in the past. It's not part of the public interface. It's part of the burn interface, right? Uh, well, um, except that native BAs implement those entry points. But but the BAs are implement an interface, not burn functions. What are the burn functions? The I mean, the DLL entry points? No. Oh. Um, Sorry, I'm not sure what to call them. They would be, you the know, VA public functions. methods. No. Oh. Burn functions like... It's an example. One. Core apply. Oh, those. Yeah, nobody cares about those. Engine run. No, those are, that's all internal. Oh, 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 the lib? That's in the lib, right? Engine uh, run. Yes, it's yeah, the no, engine no, no, lib. No, 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 no. The engine lib is a split out just so for us. No, no, no. That's internal implementation. Yeah, nobody cares. Nobody Looking can at, care. like, the, the burn tree, it's like the top-level ink directory has, you know, iBootstrapper application and iBootstrapper engine. That I consider that to be the public interface, and those have to change compatibly, right? There, there, yes, and there is a def file that goes with every BA implementation that we don't clearly mark out, right? That says oh, you yeah, must yeah. implement these one or two of these functions. Right, right, right. Those can't change either because then all BS yep. would be host. Yep. But internal engine libs stuff, no. I mean, the, the the interface between the stub and the lib is completely ours. Okay. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, no, no, none of that. Okay, well, then that, that Sean, that should take care of your your question on that pull request. Yeah. We should be good to go there, right? Uh, we've—I I know we've made changes to that in the past. Cause oh yeah, yeah, no, that's that's internal implementation stuff. Yeah, we we've, we've sometimes added too many um, arguments to some of those. <laughs> Maybe. Um, all right, so Sean and Jacob are having it out about something that I don't understand. Do we have a question there? Something about it when I was coming up. To Solutions for the variant bug. Yeah, I don't know. Don't know. Not sure. What? Not enough context for me to load that. Um, so I'm gonna let Sean and Jacob continue to sort out their thing unless we have something real we need to talk about here. Is there anything else? Oh, we're down to three, and then there were three. So oh, he left. Okay. Yeah, so I'm guessing we're not gonna get many more descriptions. Signature condition to variant methods is what I'm about. Yeah, no, the variant methods, we haven't shipped any yet, so in, any internal engine lib stuff doesn't matter. So, yeah, I don't think there's a problem there. It's so useful to, to you know, call them not public, I guess. That's a bad word, extern. They're external, but as opposed to some of the internal stuff, the, all the static functions. Yeah, I mean, the, the trick is to know that engine lib is an internal implementation detail. Yeah. Yeah. Which means that we can change Just a small it. one. <laughs> that we can change it at will. Right. So Yep. And it has things that are interfaces that it inter 
interacts with. So we have to be clear about that. Yeah. And the the definition of what a, the exports that a BA has to ex implement are not clearly defined somewhere. So that yeah. is true. So you just have to, they're documented. I know they're documented. It's like one of the few yeah. functions that are documented. Like, right. You have to have <laughs> And then, yeah, there's this interface thing. Good luck with that. Um, there's a header file somewhere. <laughs> and that's about it. So, yeah. But, there's a the header file. Yes. Well, you know, and there's Wix standard BA. Look at what it did. Oh, that's what it did. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, this is really boring. Done. Next. All right. Cool. So, I think that's all we got. Uh, it's a quarter after, a little bit after a quarter after. So, we went over by about 10 minutes, I think, because we started about seven minutes late. Um, unless there's anything else people got going on. At John Jacob Sean Hall. Please don't spend yeah. much time trying to make that work. I, I have it's just it keeps coming up because it works so well. And I just I just don't have the ending for it. The Sean Hall thing I just kinda hit recently. I was like, Oh that works. So I just haven't worked out the, the last one. I just maybe we just need a fourth person attending more regularly. There we go. Because yours or my names don't work there, so no, no. It's a double syllable thing. That's the problem. It needs to end in a. That's up. there you go. Yeah. You know. All right, Jacob keeps typing something. I'm delaying so Jacob can get whatever book he's writing. Hit enter on it. Yes. I had to add that to get my test BA. Yes, I believe that's true, and that's a bug that Sean has been working on. The fact that you had to do that because you shouldn't have to do that. No. I don't think so. There was some backwards reference, right? That's getting goofed up. Ah, intentional to require at least one prereq. Right. But it doesn't have to be that one. Fair enough. So, okay, maybe maybe I am overstating it. Right. If you were cheating by specifying the magic variable before cheating. If you're doing what was documented as the only way to do this... Well, not the only way, but... As, uh, you know, the only way in 3.9, right? Um, Probably the only way it's documented. No, no there's no a way. Specifying that sure. in 3.9? I could, no, that's because oh, you, right, could the use, uh, you could use the management sharp application run, right? Yeah, the the bollocks engine authoring. Okay, but yeah, Jacob brings up a good point. At some time, when perhaps tests were being written, that was the only way. Yes. All right. Cool. So yes. Pointing a magic variable to an ID to a package that doesn't exist any is cheating. Oh yeah, okay, that's fair. That might be fair. Oh oh, it just required that the variable resolve, not that that's it actually correct. pointed. Not actually like, linked anything. Yeah. Which is why this change is better, but yeah, okay. Because you couldn't pull in a package group doing that. Although honestly, you have to put it in your chain anyway, so maybe it didn't matter. But yeah, you could cheat before. And this is a better change. So all right, I'm gonna let you guys, you know. Go sort that out amongst yourself so I can kill the meeting and you guys can do that. Yes, right. Yes, that was cheating. And I, I will admit to to a Sean's statement of calling that cheating. That is, I think that's fair. That's a, that's a reasonable use of the word cheating. Um, yeah, I think that's fair. All right, gentlemen. Well, I'm going to bail. You guys can stay on the meeting. Uh, until next time, which will be next week, same bat place, same bat time. All that kind of good stuff. Is it bat time, then bat place? I don't know. Whatever. No, it's bat time, bat channel. Bat channel. The channel no. doesn't work. Well, I guess YouTube, if you're watching it there. So, all right. There so, you if you're go. watching it on YouTube, it works. Um, by the way, our YouTube channel got shorter, I think, because Google somehow promoted us, so we got the Wix tool set name, which I thought was kind of nice. So, anyway. Um, oh. Something I should go figure cool. out what it means, because <laughs> Google Plus, right? Who cares? <laughs> yeah. Because it's all tied together somehow, and it's like, yeah, all right. When was the last time you purposely went to a Google Plus, a Google Plus page? Mm -hmm. Google um, Plus page. I'm sure I've done it. <laughs> yeah. All right. 
Until next time, gentlemen, it's wonderful to have you here for all of you on the call, ladies and gentlemen alike. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. Later. Bye.